So continuing with our series on the exposed for undergraduate exams, we are quickly now run through the exposed done for the neck. Um, now in the diseases of neck, of course, uh, contrast enhanced CT scan is the gold standard or MRI for soft tissue diseases is the gold standard uh, because they gave us a good idea about the extent of the disease, the vascularity, the relation of the mass with the major vessels like the carotid and the internal jugular and very importantly, the whether there is any kind of enhancement or any signs of malignancy in that mass. But when we have emergency situations like a foreign body aspiration or any kind of uh, swelling in the neck or a patient who has come with severe respiratory obstruction, then uh, x-rays are very, very useful because they are very quick and they take us, they help us buy time to take a decision whether we have to take the patient in the operative setup or not. Now the first uh, x-ray that we are going to do is, uh, there are two set of x-rays of course. The first one is the x-ray for infections or inflammations like the acute epiglottitis or retropharyngeal abscess. The other set of x-rays are the x-rays for foreign bodies. So let us first discuss the x-ray for the uh, infections. Now when you start reading directly, don't jump to pathology, okay, that this is the x-ray of acute epiglottitis. You will first say that this is an x-ray which is showing the AP view and the lateral view of the neck. While the AP view appears to be normal, on the lateral view we can see the lower upper alveolus and the mandible, we can see the air column, we can see the vertebrae and we can see that there is swelling in the or inflammation or uh, radio uh, opacity, uh, lucency of the acute uh, of the epiglottis which is obstructing the airway and this is a classical acute epiglottitis. If you remember we have studied in theory that acute epiglottitis the radiological sign is called the thumb sign because the epiglottis which is normally a slit like structure will appear as a swollen thumb. So this is classically a thumb sign that we see on the radiology of acute epiglottitis. The other x-ray that you will you may have is the x-ray of retropharyngeal abscess. Now retropharyngeal abscess is the abscess of or infection collection of pus in the retropharyngeal space that is the space behind the pharynx and in front of the vertebrae and therefore this particular uh, shadow will be more widened. So there will be swelling of the retropharyngeal space. Unfortunately, that x-ray uh, is missing from the set, so I will show you some other time or I will share it with you in the description. The other set of x-rays that we have is the x-ray of the foreign bodies. Now, before we jump to the x-rays of the foreign body, there is one important uh, concept that you must understand that there are two kind of foreign bodies that we have in our, uh, we, that we encounter in our OPD. One is the radio opaque foreign bodies and the other are the vegetative foreign bodies. Vegetative foreign bodies like the common ones are peanuts, chana dal, any kind of seed like tamarind seed. Um, then these foreign bodies are not picked up by the x-rays because they are not radio opaque. So then we are always in a dilemma whether we have to take the patient for bronchoscopy or not. Now remember there may not be an obvious history that the patient, ha the relatives or the parents have said that the patient has eaten any kind of foreign body. So any kind of unexplained cough, unexplained uh, respiratory obstruction, sudden respiratory obstruction, excessive crying, fever, these are the, or wheezing which is not treated by uh, any kind of medication. These are the patients that you must take for x-ray, uh, bronchoscopy. Now, on x-ray, we do not pick up the, uh, the foreign body, but remember we have one indirect way how we can pick up that this patient might have a foreign body or a mucus plug inside. Let's say for example, if there is a foreign body in the right uh, bronchus, then of course the air, will, air entry on the right side will be reduced. And if you check the lungs on the two sides, you will see that the left lung is more perfused or better ventilated or appearing more black compared to the right lung which is a little more radiolucent or is having some kind of whitish appearance. So that lung collapse is a good sign to take the patient for bronchoscopy. Of course, if you have a radio opaque foreign body like a coin or a safety pin or a battery or a denture which has wires to attach to it, then it's a win-win situation because then you exactly know if the foreign body is there or not and at what level it is and whether you have to remove it immediately or you can wait for it like for example this foreign body now in this foreign body you can see that there is you will directly not jump this is very tempting you will say this is x-ray of foreign body coin no you will first say that this is a pa view which is showing the uh, 
neck and the upper chest mandible the cervical vertebrae and the upper ribs this is the air column and there is a rounded uh, for radio opaque shadow that is seen in the neck or upper thorax and this is likely to be a foreign body in the neck could be uh, trachea could be in the esophagus we do not know we would like to order a lateral view that will give us an idea however in cases of foreign body coin you can get some idea because remember vocal cords are directed in the anterior posterior way like this so if a coin has to negotiate the vocal cords it cannot negotiate in this position it has to negotiate in the slit way so a foreign body coin in the airway will appear like this while in the esophagus because it is anterior posteriorly flattened collapsed the foreign body will go like this so a coin can give us an idea however remember this is not necessarily true in all cases but if the foreign body is seen like this on the anterior posterior view it is likely to be in the esophagus however it is it holds partially true only for coins not for other foreign bodies we will see other foreign bodies that it will become easier if we see the lateral view of this x-ray ha huh, now it becomes very clear that this foreign body is in the esophagus right because this is the air column this is the nasopharynx oropharynx and then the larynx continuing with the trachea and this is completely clear the foreign body is right in front of the vertebrae in the soft tissue neck that is the esophagus and this is a good case for esophagoscopy of course read about esophagoscopy from your texts and uh, now the other question obvious question is how urgent it is to remove it it is not an emergency it is not causing any kind of respiratory obstruction or the child is not going to collapse if you have to you can prepare the child keep him nbm and uh, ask your anesthetist to be present you can intubate the child and do it under general anesthesia um, <clears throat> of course it has to be removed because it is going to cause aero digestive tract obstruction another similar foreign body if you see is this foreign body that is foreign body of the uh, neck again but this is safety pin now as i told you in cases of foreign bodies other than coin it becomes very difficult because the safety pin is such a small uh, thin structure that it can take any position what once it goes inside so on ap view you cannot give a diagnosis that this is in the trachea or airway or whether it is in the esophagus or aero, aero digestive tract so you need a definitely definitely a lateral view now once you see the lateral view now things become easier that this is in the esophagus right now if this is the position of the safety pin it is quite okay you can just hold it and take it out but sometimes the for so the safety pin is in the open position so if you are really having a bad day you will get a safety pin with open end upwards now if you try to pick this and take it out then the sharp end is going to cause trauma all the way so either you hold the sharp end and try to take it out or you bend the sharp end inside itself and then take it out so that it doesn't cause any trauma or if it is freely mobile try to try to shift it upside down take the blunt end up and then take it out so that is very important in cases of foreign body of the uh, sharp nature that is either a safety pin or a denture so i think this finishes our set on x-rays for undergraduates